guys if you want to unlock the full potential of your galaxy s24 ultra's cameras then you must learn all of its features so in this tutorial i'm gonna walk you through about 50 awesome camera features and along the way also give you some tips and tricks that you're gonna find super useful and this is tech guy charlie welcome if you're new here consider subscribing all right, so as always, let's start with the camera hardware because you should know the function of each of these quad camera modules. And not to mention with the S24 Ultra, Samsung has made a few changes to the camera hardware. Okay, so on the top, we've got the 12 megapixels ultra wide camera. This activates when you press the 0.6 button in the camera UI. And with a 120 degree field of view, it's gonna capture a lot of area. The main 200 megapixel camera is in the middle and this is the star of the show because it can record videos at 4K 120fps or 8K at 30fps. And along with the main camera, the 5x periscope telephoto camera which is right here at the bottom can also do 8K at 30fps. This is because it's got a new 50 megapixel sensor. And along with the 5 times zoom, it can also do 10 times zoom without any loss in quality. And the fourth camera is a 10 megapixel 3 times telephoto camera. This activates when you select the 3 times zoom level on your phone. And this is the laser autofocus system and the LED flash. By the way, all four cameras can record in 4K at 60 FPS and what's new is now you'll be able to switch between all four cameras while recording videos at 60 FPS, which was not possible on the S23 Ultra. So yeah, pretty substantial improvement here and they all have autofocus and are optically stabilized, except the ultra wide angle camera. This does have autofocus, but it lacks OIS. That's totally fine because the videos coming out of the ultra wide camera are pretty stable by themselves. And finally, on the front, we've got a 12 megapixel camera which also does 4K at 60 FPS. Plus, it's also got autofocus. So, now that you are familiar with the camera hardware of your S24 Ultra, we will now proceed to the main video. Let's start with the basics and gradually move on to the more advanced features. So let's launch the camera and all you have to do is press on the power button twice and the camera comes right up. There is absolutely no need to tap on the camera icon. And you can also do this when the screen is off, which makes launching the camera really easy. And by the way, you can also use the volume keys to take a photo. So you don't even need to touch the screen to launch the camera and take photos. And you've also got the option to use the S Pen to launch the camera. So let's take the S Pen out, press and hold the button on the S Pen and that will launch the camera. Also, you can take photos by pressing the button on the S Pen. Awesome, right? I'll talk more about this feature later in the video. But first, I wanna go over the Samsung's camera UI and tell you some settings that you should change. Alright, so this bottom row contains your camera modes. By default, you've got three modes, portrait, photo, and video. But all of the interesting stuff is inside the more tab. So you've got the manual modes, which are the pro and pro video, and night mode is here as well. So what I would recommend is customizing this bottom row, which contains your camera modes. This way you'll have easy access to the camera modes that you use frequently. So the way you customize is by dragging and dropping the camera modes from the more tab down to the bottom row. Once you get a camera mode onto this row, you can place it wherever you want. And when you are done, tap on save. And that's how you customize the camera modes. Now, let me quickly show you some settings that you should change. So what you want to do is head on into the camera settings and scroll down to shooting methods. Inside, you want to enable the floating shutter button option. And this is going to allow you to pull the shutter button out and place it anywhere on the screen. Very useful if your finger can't reach the main camera shutter button. Okay, so we're back in the camera settings and this time you want to scroll down and tap on settings to keep and switch on the selfie angle setting. This will make the phone remember the selfie angle that you set for the front facing camera. Okay, so another thing that you want to do is in the camera settings, tap on intelligent optimization and inside enable the scene optimizer. And this is going to automatically optimize the colors and contrast in the pictures that you're going to take. 
So as you can see, the picture taken with the scene optimizer enabled, which is on the right, has better contrast and colors. Next, head on into the video mode and tap here to change the resolution from full HD 30 FPS to 4K 60 FPS. This is gonna give you the best video quality possible and not to mention you can switch between all four cameras at 4K 60. And this is the resolution I use and it is perfect for watching videos that you are gonna take with your S24 Ultra on a big 4K TV. And yes, you can record in 8K if you feel like it. But it's really pointless to do so unless you have an 8K television to view these videos on. However, that said, one big advantage of recording in 8K is that you can extract high resolution 33 megapixel still images from the 8K video. So go into the gallery and select the 8K video that you want to extract the still image from. Navigate to the part of the video from which you want to extract the still image. Pause the video and press on this button. And this will extract a full resolution 33 megapixel still image from the 8K video. And the phone will save the extracted still photo in a folder called Video Capture. Here it is. And holy moly, check out that resolution 7680 into 4320. That is 8K. And this is such a high resolution photo that you can zoom in all the way without having any pixelation or distortion. That is impressive. The next thing that you want to do is head on into the Galaxy Store and download the Camera Assistant add-on. Once you do, open it and tap on Zoom Shortcuts. And inside, you want to enable the 2 times option. This is going to add a dedicated 2 times telephoto button to the camera UI. Now, as you might know, this phone does not have a dedicated 2 times telephoto camera. So the thing is, when you take photos with the 2 times zoom level, it's going to take a crop photo from the 200 megapixel main camera. And the phone uses AI to enhance the photo. And it does a really good job because there is no perceivable difference between a photo taken at 2 times zoom versus 1x. So feel free to use the 2 times zoom option whenever you feel like it. And guys, don't just take photos of documents. Instead, point your phone at the document and press on the T button. And the phone is gonna automatically detect the document and it's gonna give you two options. The first one lets you extract the text out of the document straight from the photo itself without saving it. And you can copy the text and paste it wherever you want to. But if you want to save the document as a photo, then tap on the scan button. Then make sure that the photo is properly cropped and then save it. This is going to remove any imperfections in the photo and save it as a properly scanned document. And lastly, you can also extract the text out of the document straight from the gallery itself by pressing on the T button in the document. So yeah, lots of options to play around with when it comes to taking photos of documents. Now, you might have noticed this little icon that pops up at the bottom of the screen whenever you take macro pictures like photos of flowers. If you tap on this, it activates a feature called Focus Enhancer and this feature utilizes the ultra wide angle lens to take macro photos. I can actually demonstrate by moving my finger onto the ultra wide lens. See that? That shows you the phone is using the ultra wide angle lens to take macro shots. Now, the thing is, Focus Enhancer does improve the focus due to the narrow aperture of the ultra wide lens. But this also has a side effect, you are going to completely miss out on the background blur aka bokeh. So if you want bokeh in your macro shots, then disable Focus Enhancer. But if your phone is having difficulties focusing on an object, then switch on Focus Enhancer. I also find tracking autofocus extremely useful, especially while recording videos. So once you enable this feature, tap the object that you want to keep in focus and the phone will track that object and keep it in focus. So even if you move or if the object moves, the phone will track the object and keep it in focus. Very, very useful for recording videos. Now, if you don't want tracking focus, you can disable it and use tap to focus instead. So tap on the subject that you want to focus and you can also adjust the exposure by using this slider. But after a few seconds, it goes away and everything resets. So if you want to lock the focus and exposure onto something, 
press and hold and the phone will lock the focus and exposure onto the subject. And even if you change the exposure, it's not gonna go away. So I find this feature even more useful than tracking focus. Now, when you are in the pro or the manual modes, you get the option to adjust the focus manually. Now to make things easier, you'll notice that when you start adjusting the focus, the phone will apply a green highlight to the area that is in focus. This feature is called peaking focus and it will let you know which part of your image is in focus when you adjust the focus manually in the manual modes. So this makes it very easy to have control over the focus system. And speaking of the pro or the manual modes, you've got two of them, one for the photo and the other one for the video. Both of them provide similar functionality. They give you complete manual control over the camera. And this allows you to control the camera's ISO level, shutter speed, exposure value, focus, white balance, and choose how the microphone captures the audio. And in my opinion, using the manual modes is quite beneficial because they're gonna allow you to take artistic photos like this one. I mean, it takes a bit of practice and obviously trial and error to dial in the right settings. But once you do, you're gonna end up with a beautiful photo. And not to mention in challenging situations like this, the pro mode is gonna help you capture a better quality photo compared to what you get with the auto mode. So this was taken in the night mode and this one was taken in the pro mode. See the difference? So this is why the manual mode is superior to the auto mode. And same goes for videos. You'll have to use the pro video if you want to capture aesthetic video like this one. And speaking of videos, I've also noticed that the phone kind of tends to overexpose the videos in the auto mode. It kind of looks okay, but yeah, I can tell the video is overexposed. There's something wrong with the colors on the flower. And not to mention that you don't even get to choose the speed of the autofocus. You can just tap and the phone will do the focusing for you which kind of makes the video feel very unprofessional. But using the manual controls, you can record better quality videos. So take a look at this. I am using a higher shutter speed and that fixed the overexposed issue. And because this camera mode gives you full control over the focus system, you can change it yourself to give the video a slightly cinematic feel. So yes, if you know your way around the manual modes, then this is far superior to the auto mode because it gives you full control over the camera. And not to mention that I always use the pro video or the manual mode to record the videos that go on the YouTube channel. Also, having a Bluetooth headset connected to your phone unlocks two additional audio recording features in the pro video. So in the pro video mode, tap on the mic option and you will see BT and BT mix are available for use. Now, if you select the BT option, the phone will record audio coming in from the microphone that is on your Bluetooth headset, which is very useful if you wanna film someone who isn't standing close to the phone. The second option is BT mix. And this is awesome because the phone will now capture audio from two sources, that is the phone's internal microphone, as well as the microphone on the Bluetooth headset. So this is particularly useful if you and your cameraman want to talk while recording videos. So plenty of options to choose from. However, I still recommend that you take photos and record videos in the normal auto modes because they are going to give you the best quality photo and video in every kind of situation. And this being a Samsung flagship also comes with the Expert RAW app. The main advantage of this is that you get linear DNG 16-bit RAW output along with full manual control over all four cameras. So this app takes photos in the DNG format and there are many advantages of shooting in RAW. Mainly, you get more flexibility when it comes to editing. By the way, you can import these directly into Adobe Lightroom for editing. Now, I'm not a professional photographer, so I'm not gonna pretend I know everything about Lightroom and RAW, but I will say that a little editing goes a long way. So check this out. We have gone from a crappy looking, unusable photo to something that is a little bit more presentable. And I've barely spent about 5 minutes tweaking the settings in Adobe Lightroom. So, if you are into professional photography and you know your way around Lightroom, then the Expert RAW app is a game changer. 
Now there is much more to the Expert RAW app because it's also got a dedicated astrophotography mode. So this mode allows you to take pictures of the night sky with super long exposure of up to 10 minutes so that you can capture some awesome photos of stars and galaxies in the night sky. You can even enable the sky guide to get an idea of which stars and galaxies you are taking a photo of. That is awesome. Now I would love to demonstrate how to take pictures of stars but unfortunately we're in a city right now and there's a lot of light pollution and if you take a long exposure photo with even a teeny tiny bit of light pollution you're gonna end up with a photo that looks like this. You can actually see some stars but unfortunately there's a lot of light pollution. But if it's completely dark this is the kind of photo that you can expect from the astrophotography mode in the expert raw app. Amazing, right? Now, when it comes to the telephoto cameras, the Galaxy S24 Ultra is certainly the king. The new upgraded 50 megapixel sensor under the 5x telephoto lens is awesome, and it will allow you to do 10 times zoom without any loss in image quality. Let me demonstrate. So, right now, I've got the ultra wide camera selected, and we will start zooming in onto that building. So, I'm gonna switch to the main camera. Then comes the 3 times telephoto camera and the 5 times telephoto camera. Now keep in mind once we go beyond 5 times telephoto on the S24 Ultra, it's gonna crop the image that is coming in from the 50 megapixel 5 times telephoto camera. But that is totally fine because the photos that you will take, let's say at 10 times zoom, are as good as if they were taken with an actual 10 times telephoto lens. And switching between the ultra wide, and then back to the 10 times telephoto camera really shows you how close it gets. And it really doesn't stop here. You can go even further by selecting 30 times and that really brings you up close. And surprisingly, even at 30 times zoom, the pictures are quite usable. The quality is actually good enough for an A4 size printout, which is quite impressive because at 30 times zoom, you're getting a crop photo coming in from the 50 megapixel 5x telephoto camera. So there's a lot of post processing that happens behind the scene. You can actually see the phone upscale the photo. And the quality improves substantially compared to what you were seeing on the viewfinder. And it does a pretty good job till 30 times. But anything beyond that is unusable and you will end up with a mushy looking photo. But it's impressive to see how good the camera is at 30 times zoom. I'm guessing it's using AI to upscale the photo, but whatever it is doing in the background does result in a nice and sharp looking photo. I would say these are good enough for posting on social media and for taking A4 size printouts. Very impressive for a phone. And I actually took photos at 10 times zoom in the same location with both the S24 and the 23 Ultra, which does have an actual 10 times tele lens, and the results are pretty much identical. Even at 100% zoom, I feel that the quality of the S24 Ultra, which only has a 5 times tele lens, is actually as good as the S23 Ultra, which has an actual 10 times telephoto lens. However, at 30 times zoom, the pictures coming out of the S23 Ultra's camera looks slightly more detailed. It's not something that you will notice when you post this on social media, but yeah, there's a slight difference. Now, the best thing is that all of these cameras also work in social media apps like Snapchat and Instagram. Snapchat actually shows you a little button at the bottom which you can tap to activate the ultra wide angle camera. And as you start zooming in, the telephoto camera will take over automatically. You can actually tell when the switch happens to the telephoto camera, it's right about here. Awesome, right? So this will allow you to take crystal clear zoomed in photos with third party apps like Snapchat. And yes, you can also use the ultra wide and the telephoto camera in Instagram. So yeah, there aren't many Androids in the market that can do this. Definitely an exclusive feature to Samsung flagships and iPhones. Now the camera integration also means that you can take photos of the moon using Snapchat. You really don't have to do anything, just start zooming in onto the moon and eventually the image will clear up and you will get a crystal clear photo of the moon. And you can send it to your friends and impress them. 
and boy oh boy this phone takes incredibly detailed photos of the moon so to take a photo of the moon you don't have to do anything special just point your s24 ultra at the moon select the 30 times zoom and the phone will do the rest for you once the moon is in frame just tap on the shutter button and that is it and you're gonna end up with a beautiful photo of the moon I think everybody knows that there is a dedicated night mode on Samsung smartphones and this is gonna help you capture crisp and sharp photos in low light conditions without using a tripod. So check this out, took this photo in almost complete darkness and it looks great. Now here is a hidden feature that many people don't know. If you want better quality low light photos, then you can increase the exposure even more by using a tripod stand. So once you set the exposure to max, the phone will automatically detect that it's on a tripod and it will automatically increase the maximum exposure. So you can see the exposure has gone up from 4 seconds all the way to 15 seconds. And this is gonna give you a slightly better photo. So in a side by side comparison, you can clearly see that the one on the right, which was taken using longer exposure has better details, especially in the grass. It also works with the telephoto camera, but unfortunately for the telephoto cameras, the maximum exposure that you get is 5 seconds in the night mode even if you use a tripod stand. But that is more than enough to get a decent quality photo. So take a look, that looks beautiful. If you're a vlogger, you are absolutely going to love this next feature. So this phone has a feature called dual recording which allows you to use the front as well as the rear cameras together. So you've got the video feed coming in from the rear cameras and also have your face in the video itself in this picture in picture sort of a view. You can even move the video feed that is coming from the front facing camera around. And hey, you can even flip the cameras around. So now the feed coming in from the front camera is our background and the video feed coming in from the rear cameras is in the picture in picture mode. You can also change the layout from picture in picture to side by side. So yeah, plenty of features to play around with. You can also save both video feeds as two separate files. Press on this button and the phone will save both the videos as two separate 16 is to 9 video files. One from the front camera and the other one from the rear camera. And you can edit these later on a PC or a Mac. So this actually gives you a lot of flexibility. However, Samsung did remove the ability to switch between the rear cameras while recording the video, which is something so basic that my Z Flip can also do. But the S24 Ultra can't. So there is no option to switch between the rear cameras once you start recording. So you'll have to select the cameras before you hit the record button. Now I absolutely love time lapse videos and this phone has a feature called hyperlapse that lets you record great quality time lapse videos. So by default the hyperlapse mode will be inside the more tab and here it is. And I would recommend that you record using a tripod for this if you want to record good quality time lapse videos. The phone is also capable of capturing stunning, super wide panoramas. Taking panoramas is actually very easy. Select the panorama mode, tap on the shutter button and start panning your phone in the direction of the arrow and the phone will automatically capture photos and create a panoramic shot for you. And this is what we have ended up with. Looks awesome, right? You can also take photos at the full 200 megapixel resolution of the main camera. Now taking photos at the maximum resolution is not a good idea since removing pixel binning will give you slightly lower quality photos. And you also will not be able to use the telephoto camera if you select the 200 megapixel option. But due to the insane resolution, you can zoom in a lot without experiencing any pixelation or distortion. It is just insane how much you can actually zoom in. I mean, that is just insane. And here's a tip. To record videos, you don't have to switch the camera mode from photo to video. If you press and hold the camera shutter button in the photo mode, the phone will start recording a video. See that? And now you can either keep your finger on the screen to continue recording or drag it to this lock icon to get some additional options. So now you can switch between the cameras, take a still photo and even pause the video recording.
So this way you can quickly record a video without going into the actual video mode. Unfortunately, there is a limitation to this. The videos that are recorded in the photo mode are limited to full HD as you can see from the video resolution. So to record in 4K, you will have to go to the actual video mode. Now, when you are in the video mode, you can take still photos by tapping on this button. So this way you can capture a still image while the video recording is going on. So that's super convenient. Now, if you swipe down on the shutter button, the phone will take 100 photos in quick succession. So this is the burst mode, which is great for capturing fast moving objects. And later on, you can select the photos that you want to save in the gallery from over here. If you want to take photos and record videos with DSLR like background blur or have fancy effects like this, then you might want to use the portrait modes. You've got two of them, portrait for still images and portrait video. Now inside here, you get a couple of effects. The first one is the background blur, kind of gives you that DSLR like feel. Then you've got studio, high key mono, low key mono, backdrop, and my favorite color point. So plenty of effects to choose from. And as for videos, you've got portrait video. It is the exact same thing, but instead of photos, it records videos. The camera also has a couple of built-in filters and you can access these by tapping on this button and then tapping on filters. Now if these aren't enough, tap on the plus button and select download filters and this will take you to the galaxy store from where you can download more filters and there are plenty of free filters available on the galaxy store. But if you are still not happy with all of these, then you can create a filter from your very own photos. So once again, tap on the plus button and this time select create filter and pick a picture from the gallery. For demonstration purposes, I am going to pick this one. So the phone is going to analyze the dominant colors in this picture and use them as the filter. So this photo has a lot of bluish purple, hence the blue purple filter. Here's another one. This photo has a lot of yellow in it. So you get a yellowish filter. This feature is pretty darn amazing, right? And finally, tapping on the face button opens up the beauty filters. These are basic enhancements for your face. Now coming to slow-mo, you've got the option to record in 4K at 120fps and one of the advantages is that you can slow the video down to 30fps and that is gonna give you a high quality cinematic slow motion effect. It's not the slowest slow motion because the video is at 120 FPS, but the quality is substantially higher than the previous generation smartphones because the video is in 4K. Now, if you want to go slower, then you might want to select the full HD 240 FPS option and that is going to give you a slower slow motion effect. However, Samsung did get rid of the 960 FPS super slow-mo option which used to be a thing on their older generation smartphones which unfortunately has been removed from the S24 Ultra. It's a very niche feature but yeah, it's still nice to have. You can also turn pretty much any video into a slow-mo using AI. So to get a preview, we can tap and hold on the video and the phone will instantly turn the video into a slow-mo, which is awesome. Now, if you want to save the video as a slow-mo, you will have to go into the video editor and then tap on adjust speed to create a slow-mo out of your normal videos. You might want to check out the preview and then save the video. So yeah, this is such an awesome feature of the S24 series. I absolutely love it. Now, did you know that you can use an external monitor with your Samsung Galaxy smartphone using only a single USB Type-C cable? So it's a single cable solution that handles a couple of things. Number one, it handles the power so it keeps your phone charged. Number two, it carries the video and the sound signal together. So if you happen to play a video, the sound will actually come out of the monitor. Very useful if you want to watch movies through your phone on a bigger screen. And lastly, it will also enable touch if your monitor is a touch screen. So that is awesome, right? And using an external monitor can be quite beneficial if you use your phone as a dedicated video camera, which I actually do.
So the external monitor is actually an integral part of my video recording setup. Why? Because the phone is mounted in such a way that I cannot look at its screen, especially when I'm sitting on my chair. So that's where the external monitor can be very useful and all of the controls are on the monitor so I can control the phone directly from over here. And since the monitor also supplies power to the phone, I don't have to worry about running out of battery. So now you see how useful an external monitor really is. And not to mention that you can also run Samsung DeX complete with touch input, no docks or special cables required. So an external monitor can also be your productivity tool. And if you are wondering, the monitor that I'm using is from ViewSonic and the model is TD1655. It's a 15 inch USB Type-C portable touchscreen monitor. Oh, and by the way, this being a portable monitor means that you can power this off the phone's battery. So even if we unplug the USB cable supplying power to the monitor and the phone, it will automatically switch over to the phone's battery. And this can be extremely useful when you don't have an external USB power source available. And this is something that I regularly use while filming videos because I don't always have a USB power source available. So it's not something that's there just for the sake of being there. It's actually an extremely useful feature. Now what do you do if your monitor does not support USB Type-C input? Well, then you'll need one of these USB Type-C to HDMI adapters. And using this, you'll be able to connect to pretty much any display or a projector which has an HDMI input. And these adapters are quite cheap and are easily available. And because the adapter has a USB Type-A port, you can plug in and use a standard PC mouse with Samsung DeX. And it will even keep your phone charged because you can connect your charger through this. So yeah, it's a nice little gadget to have. Now coming back to the camera assistant, at the end you will notice an option which says clean preview over HDMI displays. And this is quite a niche option because enabling this will hide the camera UI on the external display giving you a clean video feed. And sometimes this can be useful to figure out if the frame is in focus or not. Because usually the shutter button and the camera UI is gonna block things that are on the right side of the display. And this is also quite useful if you want to use your phone as a video capture device for your PC, which is another niche application. So we're using an HDMI to USB capture card to capture the video feed coming in from the phone. Basically, this allows you to use the phone as a high-end webcam. Trying to take a group photo on a tripod but can't reach the camera shutter button? Well, no problem. Show your palm to the phone and it will take a photo. There you go. You can even tell the phone to take a photo by saying cheese and the phone is gonna take a photo. But the best thing is you can use the button on your S Pen to take a photo or to record a video. So let me explain the S Pen features in a little bit more detail. Now, you guys already know that if you press and hold the button on the S Pen, that's gonna launch the camera and pressing the button takes a photo or starts a video recording. But if you hold the button and flick the S Pen up, that will switch to the front facing camera and flicking the S Pen down will switch back to the rear lens. You can also press the button and rotate the S Pen clockwise to zoom in and also activate the telephoto cameras. And rotating counterclockwise will zoom out and also activate the ultra wide lenses. Then you can also change the camera modes by flicking the S Pen from left to right or right to left. Amazing right? And finally you can give a slideshow in the gallery by using the same method. So yes, the S Pen is more than just a simple stylus, it's a fully functional part of your Galaxy S24 Ultra. Now in the video mode, you might have noticed this icon of someone running. Tapping this will turn on super steady. This feature applies a really strong EIS or electronic image stabilization to videos and this gives you shake free videos. It almost looks as if the video was recorded with the phone mounted on a gimbal. Also, if you've got photos that aren't leveled, you can use the generative AI to fix them. So open the photo that you want to fix in the built-in photo editor and then tap on the generative AI icon. 
Here adjust the level and once you are satisfied, tap on generate and the phone will fill in the gaps on the edges and it's just like magic. So there you go, the photo has been fixed. You can also use the generative AI to pick and place objects in a photo. So open the photo that you want to edit in the generative AI tool and here long press on an object that you want to move. So we can pick and place the starfish from its original location to here and generate. And there you go, that's how you move objects in a photo. And same applies if you are trying to delete an object. So open the photo in the generative AI tool, long press on the object that you want to erase, tap on the delete button and then generate. And this will get rid of the object and the phone will fill in the empty space. Awesome, right? One of the most underrated camera feature on a Samsung phone is the single take mode. When you press the camera shutter button in the single take mode, what happens is that the camera records a short video and then it takes screenshots from it and spits out a couple of photos and videos with a lot of different effects. So you can see we've got a highlight video, then a boomerang clip, slow-mo clip, crop photo, filtered photo and here is the original video. So yeah, this is one of the underrated camera features that many people don't really talk about. Also, when you tap here, you've got the option to choose what the camera captures. So you can just disable the type of photo that you don't want to see. There's also a feature called Shot Suggestions. If you enable this, the phone will kinda help you compose your photos. So it will analyze the scene and place a dot on the screen and you can move your phone towards the dot and get an overall better composition. And I kinda agree with what the phone has suggested since the tree is now at the center of our frame. So guys, that brings us to the end of the video. Now there are more features and settings. For example, I haven't even touched the AR zone. But since I wanna limit this video to 30 minutes, we are going to stop here. Also, if this video was helpful, make sure to hit the like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Tech Guy Charlie signing off.